So, hi, welcome to the third week of our live session of the online course Making Young Social Innovators. I'm here today again with two of my colleagues. Um, one you already know, Karina, maybe for those who are joining today, you could introduce yourself shortly. Yes, hello, my name is Karina and I work as an assistant professor at the University College South in Denmark, where we train teachers and social pedagogues and all of these uh, children training educations. Great, thank you, Karina. And my second colleague today is Frank from Waag. Good afternoon, I'm uh, Frank Vloed from Baag in Amsterdam. We are a research institute for uh, technology and society and I work on the maker education projects. Uh, and at the moment, uh, one of my main projects is uh, uh, starting up 10 maker spaces in the libraries in Amsterdam. So I'm training the, uh, the library staff to run maker education workshops there. Uh, and we also test and develop uh, workshops for kids. Uh, and we're actually really happy we can open up the maker spaces again bit by bit this month. And uh, so we're going to have a summer of maker activities uh, in Amsterdam. Great, thank you so much, Frank. Yeah, and then you can use some of the materials that we will present today from our toolbox. So for those who already uh, took a look at the third week of the course, you saw that it's about our core outcome, more or less, the Do It Toolbox which offers materials for children and facilitators who want to uh, plan and conduct a um, social innovation process and the making process. So maybe I'll just give you a short introduction to the toolbox. Um, you already saw the video from Karina, who showed you how to navigate through the toolbox, um, where you can find everything, and also showed you an example um, of a material mapping the problem and basically the toolbox uh, was developed over the last two and a half years in the project and right now we are counting over 150 materials so it's quite a number for you to use and um, you can find them in all of the innovation steps that we showed you from the do it learning program from sensitize to explore to scale up and share and I think it's a great selection for you um, and it also shows of course the tested materials which were also used from the organizations of do it and maybe we can just dive in in your experience of, with the tools um, Karina if you want to like uh, to tell us a little bit about the material you used in your workshops and how did you feel with the material Yes, um, one of the main uh, tools that we used um, was the journey map tool, which is really cool in kind of designing the way through uh, your project and your idea from from just the tiniest start of a sprouting idea to the key moments you take on the journey so uh, towards uh, the end goal or the the uh, the vision that you you have and uh, the way we used it was um both with our, our teacher students in their planning of um, workshops because at university college south we did it in a way that we integrated the whole do it program into the teacher education as a part of curriculum, so to say. So our students actually used several of the do it toolbox tools um, within their uh, curriculum. So the journey map was one of the, the big hits because it gave such a great overview of um, what they wanted to do with their own workshops from uh, what point of view they had uh, or what the starting point they had and what they wanted to end up with workshop wise and then they actually used it with the children as well when they went out into the schools and did their facilitated their do it workshops 
so they presented the do it journey map tool for the children as well and they used it as well so it's it was a great tool to kind of implement all the way and that was definitely one of the the biggest hits for us and also obviously a lot of the brainstorming tools the children was just over the moon about some of those three times why was uh, a hit as well very easy to understand we're very easy to go into even for the the smallest children yeah thank you karina that's great maybe um frank you could just share your opinion with us yes of course um so uh the tools we used in our uh, do it uh, actions in amsterdam were also the um, mapping the problem tool uh, so the one karina presented uh, what I really like about that one is that um, you can sort of unpack a very big uh, societal issue such as sustainability and even though you might just focus on a small part of the solution you can still relate to the bigger theme and uh, by making it physical on the table and what in what ways the, uh, the problem of sustainability extends um, you can uh, yeah you can zoom out a bit rather than just focusing on one solution uh, that's what i really like and another tool we uh, used is for example the art bot or the balloon car which are small maker challenges so you you can do them in uh, 20 minutes um, or half an hour uh, and it's just a warm up activity to get uh, the kids um, um, making physical things uh, which uh, sometimes also with uh, electronics it can be a bit um, how you say, overwhelming uh, and also a bit uh, uh, scary, uh, but the art bot is a very low threshold way to engage with um, electronics. Uh, it has a small motor and a small uh, and a battery uh, and once the motor starts spinning, um, uh, the, the cup starts moving and then you can attach, um, how you say, uh, pens to it so it starts drawing when it's moving uh, and it's really uh, it doesn't need a lot of instruction for the kids and it can come become very creative and that's like a first step to make an electronic circuit um, and that's what I like uh, yeah what I like about the small maker exercise to start a workshop yeah that's great thank you so much um, so if you so our participants of course have any questions you can always share them with us and we trying to answer them. Um, maybe um, I also share one of my favorite tools. Um, it's the one that we are always using when we are doing a workshop and it's the Smart Cardboard Prototype Kit. Um, that's the postcard of it. So we also did a, a sticker postcard of it and it's a really easy way to um, yeah, to learn the Internet of Things. So children just can build up their prototype out of cardboard. And instead of using real sensors, which maybe uh, is not possible for some facilitators, you can just use the stickers and you can create your own smart device without any sensors. And it's a really nice and easy step to really get introduced to Internet of Things and then in the next step to improve it and scale it up, you can use real sensors. And it's a really easy way to see if your prototype is even working in reality. So I think that's really nice. And yeah, so that's my favorite tool from the toolbox if you can say it like that. They are all great, of course. And um, maybe also um, I should share with you that all of our material in Toolbox is open licensed, so you can use it freely, you can distribute it, you can adapt it and use it for your own purposes. Maybe you have a, a, a nice graphic you would like to insert, you can just do that and use it. So we're happy if you distribute it. And just scroll through it and yeah, share your opinion in the forum, of course. So I'm just checking, no questions. So Karina, you did a great job again with your <laughs> explanation of the toolbox. Thank you. <laughs> um, I just 
scrolled through uh, the toolbox just now and saw that there's a lot of the manuals uh, up and running on the toolbox now, which is super cool because these manuals are like plug and play workshops that uh, you as participants and, and uh, facilitators can just take out and take inspiration from or even replicate if you want to. Uh, if it fits into your settings. And I think that's really neat to kind of build upon experiences and even iterate uh, things that's been going on out there. So there's a lot of cool things that you can kind of roam around and find within the toolbox. And it keeps growing, I think, um, over the, the next period of time. Yeah, it is. And um, as you mentioned, the manuals, maybe I just show everyone uh, where you can find them right now in the info center. If you scroll down, you can find a selection of them. So there will be about 11 more manuals. So for those of you who already took a look at the manuals last week, there are more to come, so be prepared <laughs> and have a lot of time to read through them and use them. And also the handbook is very present here in the Info Center. And as Karina also showed in the video, in the library you have everything in alphabetical order, so you can just scroll through it and also use the search function, of course. And actually, if I can just add that uh, the handbook, one of the things that we did in uh, in the university in Denmark was to integrate the handbook into curriculum as well. So if you're out there listening to this and you're also in a position where you train trainers somehow, be aware that this handbook is a very, very neat tool to kind of integrate and uh, use as part of your program as well. And also not only for children, so of course our um, target group are children from 6 to 16, but some of these materials are really nice to use in a, in a business workshop, for example. So it's a playful way to get a little interdisciplinary work done, so I think that's great. And we also got the feedback um, in facilitated trainings that they would like to adapt some of the tools, so that's really, really great. And of course, um, you can also just share everything on your platforms. If you have one, if you have a, a database, you can just um, take the tools, take the toolbox if you want to and implement everything. <laughs> so. so just checking once again for questions. a little bit slow today. I can yeah, see. We have sorry. one. <laughs> sorry. Um, OK, can you say more about the mapping the problem tool? How do you go from a big issue um, to a problem that is close enough to the kids and that seems manageable? So maybe, Frank, you can answer it. Yeah, I can answer uh, based on our uh, experience, uh, how we used it. Um, so what we, uh, our workshop was about uh, waste and uh, robotics. So the children were um, uh, making uh, robots out of waste that could uh, solve part of the waste problem. Uh, and what we did uh, to map the, the problem of waste, uh, we took one product, a pair of jeans, um, and then uh, we started asking the children like uh, uh, what are uh, where did it came from so uh, what happened before uh, you bought a pair of jeans um, so then you sort of uh, can go down the production chain so um, first it's in the store in um, uh, in your city uh, but before that it was um, probably uh, on a boat from a factory and then you can ask the next question what was it behind what happened before uh, in the factory uh, like what, uh, where did the resources come from? So where did the cotton come from? Are there any waste issues there? 
so you can sort of um, go down the production chain. And you can also ask um, what happens after you, when you rip your pair of jeans, do you repair it? Do you give it away to someone else? Uh, or do you throw it out? Uh, so there's like many uh, parts in the production chain where you can uh, identify waste problems. Um, and then you can pick one of them out to start making your prototype. So you, you, you cannot solve the whole problem at once uh, or make a solution for the whole production chain, but you can uh, you can pick out one of the steps. So we had a, a robot that was uh, fishing, uh, fishing up uh, waste from the sea. Uh, there was a, um, a robot that could uh, cleaner, um, like a, I say, um, CO2 free uh, transport, um, uh, recycling machines. So there's uh, various ways to uh, to engage with that. Uh, and we could identify those points where you could uh, make a, a solution by mapping out the problem. Uh, so I hope this uh, answers your question, uh, Patricia. Yeah, thank you. I also think it's very important to, uh, like we also, um, I think, say in one of our requirements for a successful do it action, um, that you have to take the abstract topic and really like break it up for the children. So they have something really tangible to see that, that the, the big problem is not so big anymore. So I think mapping the the problem is really a nice tool to do that. Um, Karina, how did you manage to um, break up such big topics or did you go into the um, into the pilots and into the workshops with a prepared topic? So our, um, our students did two things. They actually did one and the other. Um, and the students that went in with a more prepared topic worked by themselves uh, with breaking down kind of the, the, the problem, the topic beforehand into a um, into a design question that still left uh, enough openness that the children could work with this problem um uh in a in a more open processed kind of way um and that worked really really well um especially for the smaller children whereas the students that went in uh with only a overall topic like environment they had to spend a lot of time narrowing down the kind of the problem through several iterations of uh, visions and canvases uh, and um, several brainstorming sessions. And here, here's where the special, especially for the smaller children, the three times why became a, a very nice go to tool because it's so intuitive, it's so easy to kind of it's like mapping the problem, but in a miniature scale uh, tool. And I, I think that's really nice and very understandable for the smaller children. The workshop where we worked with uh, older children or high schoolers, we uh, worked more with desk research as part of the narrowing down problem. So from a kind of um, uh, motivational driven uh, aspect of what do you want to work with within this big umbrella of a topic and then letting the, the children or the high school students kind of break that down via desk research to kind of investigate, explore the topic and then working on qualifying the the issues um, and qualifying the ideas. And I think we actually have a tool in the toolbox uh, with idea qualification. And to make that kind of visual, to put it up on the wall or, or on posters to say this 
on one hand is what we can work with and this on the other hand and as a team uh, becoming more and more aware of what road do we want to uh, walk down on. But the two the two scenarios are way different and also uh, way different in what time it takes, like the con the how time consuming it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you're looking for a quick and quick and nice version, then uh, where the students came in with an open in the design question that made for a quicker process into the actual development. Whereas the other one made for a longer idea process, but that the student ha students had or the children had so much benefit from that whole process also, especially in kind of the um, teamwork aspect of things that they really ended up being on the same page for the project and there was no understandings along the road on what they wanted to work on because they spent so much time narrowing down their own question. So it's a, you can do both and we did both and there's good and pros and cons on both ends of that. Yes, yes, I totally agree. So um, in the workshop we did in Salzburg with the younger kids, so um, five to ten, so really small ones also. Um, we also had the social detective. So be beforehand we had a co-creation session, of course, because uh, we came in with a big topic, health and fitness. And of course we were thinking, yeah, we're in school, uh, maybe would they would like to um, design a, a game or something like that and then in the co-creation session we really um, used three to four hours with um, a, a, a smaller group of children um, to identify the smaller topics they would like to work on and we were really surprised when they came up with yeah we want to do accident prevention because it's winter and we uh, we can slip and something like that, and it's dangerous, and maybe we can find something in the school. We want to work on that. And yeah, it, it was really nice to see that they chose things that we didn't think about, of course. So we wouldn't come into the school saying, yeah, we are working on accident prevention today. So it was really nice to see that. And the social detective is also a material where uh, they have to work together, so they are running through the school and looking for problems, more or less. So they um, they search for dangerous spots where they could get hurt, and it was really nice to see. Of course, uh, each group was accompanied by a facilitator, <laughs> um, but it was nice to see which ideas came up, and I think it's it's nice to see um, which ideas the kids have and on which topics they want to work on so i think also it gives uh there's a there's a clear uh benefit to this where the children are so motivated and we get a like kind of stolen uh look into their kind of world where as facilitator it's so easy to come in, uh, do a workshop and, and kind of put your own convictions or own um, thoughts and ideas over the head of children. But when you really facilitate this, this space for the uh, children to kind of develop their own ideas, uh, run with their own motivations and even explore what motivates them, that gives for very, very special atmosphere and a very special working environment for facilitators and children. And I think that's really interesting to explore in this kind of setting that the Druid approach uh, kind of promotes. Yeah, yeah, thank you, Karina. So uh, maybe I'm just checking again for some questions, but right now we don't have any. So Looking at the time, maybe Frank, um, do you have something to add for us or do you have a question for us? <laughs> I do not have a question uh, and also um, no, not, nothing specific to ask. Um, so 
if there are any more questions, of course, they can be uh, directed to the forum uh, and uh, or, or next week during the Q and A. Yeah, say. exactly. Yeah, thanks for um, making the bridge <laughs> more or less. So, uh, if you have any questions uh, regarding the toolbox or also the manuals, um, it doesn't matter. Just post it in the forum, and uh, we are happy to answer them. And yeah, we will start the last week of the course on Friday. So uh, next week is all about your plans and your projects and how you find partners, how you could collaborate with institutions. So if you're interested to really um, use all the things you've learned over the last three weeks, um, be curious and yeah, we're looking forward and also to the next live session again on Wednesday, same, same time. And we will post the link, of course, in the forum and in the news section of the course. So thanks again for a fruitful discussion. Thanks to my colleagues and thanks to Antti in the background, our technical support. And see you next week. Bye.